My name is Leah Mahaney Herder, and I am a queer transracial adoptee living in the United States of America. I am one of China's lost daughters, and this is my story. I was born in Changde, a city of 6 million people in the Hunan province of China. I was adopted at 11 months old. I have no information about where I was left or found, or the circumstances that led to my adoption. According to the United States government, my birthday is September 24, 1996, but I'll never know when I was actually born. My gotcha day, or the day I was legally adopted, is August 27, 1997. My parents decided to adopt me after seeing an advertisement for Chinese orphans and traveled to China to take me home. We all returned to Florida and rejoined my older brother, making us a family of four. I knew that I was different from the beginning, simply because I didn't look like my family. My parents were honest with me about my adoption and enrolled me in classes with other Chinese adoptees. Three years later, I gained two younger siblings, Lauren, who was also adopted from China, and Jack, who was born biologically to my parents. My family moved to Ohio and then to Middleton, Wisconsin. I spent the next 12 years in Middleton. During middle school, I began to question everything I thought I knew about myself. I began to wonder about who I was, what I stood for, and what I wanted to do with my life. I joined my school's Gay Straight Alliance, or GSA, shortly after starting high school, and began to do some activist work surrounding the LGBTQ community. I participated in events like Day of Silence, Transgender Day of Remembrance, and Words Heart Week. Through GSA, I was able to attend a camp called Leadership Training Institute, or LTI, during August of 2014. LTI is a camp for LGBTQ high schoolers in Wisconsin and was one of the most monumental experiences I had. Before camp, I had been questioning my sexuality but couldn't come out or choose a label to identify myself. LTI gave me the courage and knowledge I needed to define myself in a way I felt comfortable with, queer. One of the activities at LTI was a Queer Asian Caucus. It was during this discussion that I finally found my community. It was my first time confronting the racism that I had experienced and the entire caucus was healing and raw at the same time. This discussion was my first step on the journey of confronting the complexities of being a queer Asian. The people I met during this caucus became some of the most important people in my life. They were the first queer Asians I had met, people who shared my identities, pains, and experiences. They validated my frustrations at the racism and homophobia I had experienced. It was very affirming to have this community who knew what it was like to be queer and Asian, and I began to feel less alone. Once I had figured out my queer identity, everything fell into place. I had a hold on who I was and what I stood for. I was aware of the injustices in the world, but only then realized that they had a personal effect on my friends and I. It became very important for me to fight for my rights, and I began to join queer activist groups with my friends. During my senior year, I joined a queer theater group called Proud Theater. Proud Theater was a group for LGBTQ youth to share their own stories, since our narratives are often written without our permission. I was able to tell my story the way I experienced it for the first time. Being able to write my own narrative was so empowering and healing. Proud Theater empowered me to continue sharing my story. During the spring of 2013, I traveled to China for the first time since my adoption. The adoption agency I was adopted through provided trips for adoptees to return to their birth country and volunteer in orphanages similar to the ones that they had stayed at. I remember being anxious about returning since I didn't remember China, but I was still excited. That trip turned out to be one of the most important experiences in my life. I expected that I would feel an immediate connection with my birth country, but instead I felt very foreign. I had become so Americanized that China didn't recognize me anymore. That was a really difficult feeling for me and almost pushed me away from reconnecting with my culture. But as I spent more time in China, I realized that the work it would take to return to my roots was worth it. This trip home influenced me to study Mandarin Chinese in college and to begin searching for my birth family. After returning to the U.S., I began to research the city I'd come from as well as any other information that would tell me more about my origins. I returned to China after my freshman year of college through a program at the University of Minnesota. I was anxious again, but this time I knew what to expect. I learned a lot during this trip and truly realized how disconnected I was from my culture. 
The time I spent there reignited my desire to learn more about where I came from. Right now, I am a student at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities studying political science and Mandarin Chinese. I know who I am, what I stand for, and what I want in life. There were so many obstacles in my journey to self-discovery, and there were so many times when I wanted to give up. But all of the struggles were worth it because now I can live an authentic, honest life. It's hard to be a queer Asian, but the most important thing I learned was that there are other people like me out there. And the sooner I found those people, the better my life became. I was one of China's lost daughters, but I am coming home.